What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to this week's episode of Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris. This is my old man, Rolly. And today we're going to be talking about the new watches from Tudor. Tudor 2019. Uh, we're going to look at them, their watches, uh, you know, react to them, and then analyze what the frig is going on with this brand. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All right, before we get into it, a quick wristwatch check. What do you have on the wrist? Ah, uh, the GMT, man. Love it. I'm loving it. Remember I, the first video you ever did yes. was uh, watch people in wine. Yes, and it was your story of that watch. Yes, it was great. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, it's so such a sentimental value. How many here. years now? Thirteen years. Um, yeah, thirteen. Years. Yeah. If yeah. you guys do not know the yeah. story of this GMT and how it ended up on on, on this guy's wrist, uh, go ahead and watch uh, the episode. Uh, we'll put the links after this. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing a 34 millimeter Rolex, um, solid gold, gorgeous. I absolutely love these watches and the size. Watch. Everyone thinks gold Rolex is douchey, and in many ways it is or it can be. Um, but when they're 34, especially on a strap, they're so much more approachable. Love it. Beautiful watch. This watch, not this, but this is available in the <laughs> Theo and Harris watch shop. Okay, before we get into these four Tudor 2019 releases um, that have me a little bit confused, and I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to your opinion, uh, I'd like to remind you all that we are giving away a watch this month and every single month. Uh, this month's watch is Dan Henry's blacked out PVD chronograph. Uh, it's 1972. It's inspired by the Porsche design uh, chronograph, actually they're called the chronograph one. I don't know if you know this, um, but the Porsche design chronograph that they made in collaboration with Orfina that Dan Henry used as an inspiration for, for their 1972 was the first design that F.A. Porsche, the designer of the 911, mm -hmm. made after his departure from Porsche. Is that right? Yes. I the first know. thing he made was a watch. And it was the watch that Dan Henry uses as an inspiration. Jeez. Huge props to Dan that's, Henry for the watch. Nice, yeah. I've enjoyed my time with it. Love it. Uh, now we're giving it away. So sign up down in the description and subscribe to Theo and Harris for a chance to win. And now tutor. All right. All right. So let's get into it. A Basel World was a few weeks ago, um, but it's really ever relevant, right? We're talking about the new watches of the year, the watches that we're going to be you know, seeing, talking about, um, being asked about for the next you know 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's forever important. So before we get into it, uh, let's do a little wine. What are we drinking, Daddy? We're gonna drink a uh, a white wine, a blend okay. from Friuli okay. by Marco Feluga. If you recall, a few uh, about a month or two ago, I was uh, in uh, in uh, ski country in Colorado. Yeah, you were. And I had the Mongris, yeah, which is also being made by uh, Marco Feluga. Delicious, absolutely delicious wine. Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, like I said, this is Pinot Grigio, Pinot Bianco, yep. right? Pinot Blanc, yep. if, if you're uh, across the border and into France. Yep. And a little bit of Friulano, just a touch. I love Northern Italian whites. Yep. They're so delicate, they're floral. Yep. They're beautiful to drink. Yeah. Chin Don. Hundred years. <laughs> Hundred years. <laughs> Is that C H I N then D O N? Yeah, Chindan. <laughs> delicious. Wow, super, super. Uh, uh, um, oh boy, this crisp is delicious. And, and, yeah, and uh, fruity. It's delicious. Yeah. It's it's bright. It's delicious. Did you say delicious? <laughs> So, All right, let's, so let's talk. Let's get into it. Um, let's let's first start here, uh, you guys. Yep. Tudor is, is is Rolex's baby brother, right? Uh, Tudor, from its inception, almost was the you know affordable version of Rolex. Way back in history, Tudor really was its own brand in that they were producing watches that Rolex wasn't. Um, still with oyster cases and in collaboration with Rolex. Um, but then as time went on, Tudor really became the very like literally. The cheaper Rolex. Mm -hmm. yes. That being said, the watches have always been well respected, really, really great watches. I wouldn't hesitate to wear one in a second. And in fact, there are many Tudors that I would wear over many Rolexes. So at this point in history, um, they're, they're almost equal in a lot of ways, right? But their modern price point does undercut Rolex significantly. Yeah. You have Tudor um, Black Bays that are in the $3,700 range, which is the Submariner all equiv equivalent, and the Sub is, I believe, in the 8s or the 9s. Mm -hmm. So th there's there's a big difference here in price. So Tudor's reintroduction has been, in many ways, a big gift to the watch community. But that said, Tudor has a long, successful history, right? And anyone that has achieved greatness in the past knows you have big shoes to fill. Absolutely. Right? You're always under the yes. microscope. Absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, and I try not to be hypercritical because it's not fair, you know, but 
We got to be critical. And you got to you have to renew your greatness every day. Exactly right. So let's run through the 2019 Tudor lineup. Okay, so the first watch is the new Black Bay Bronze. Um, Tudor has released the Black Bay in bronze before. So anything, everything going on here is just a color change. One, how do you feel about bronze watches? Eh, I'm not, I'm not, not so a big, big fan. On it. Not a big fan. Bronze pa uh, patinates, but it develops patina really aggressively. Have you seen photos of patina in bronze watches? I have not. Are you ready to see a photo? Sure. Ooh, wow. it's like moldy. Jesus. Isn't that Christ. crusty? Yeah, it looks like a dirty pipe. Yeah, it does look like a dirty pipe. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's also kind of gross. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it looks like, look like, looks like, you know, like oxidized copper. Right, agreed. Like, yeah. you know, when the like house a, has a pipe, beautiful, yeah. and then it the turns. pipes look like that. Exactly. Okay, so copper as a material, you're a little bit eh on, but what do you, what do you think about the release itself? I, I don't, I don't care for it. Yeah, nothing. Not necessarily no. innovative? No. Right? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Larry David. Yeah. Okay, number two is another Black Bay chronograph. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen the first Black Bay chronograph, but let me show you. Yeah. This was the one that was released, uh, I think, a year, maybe two years ago. A black dial, very, very simple, um, reminiscent of vintage Daytonas by Rolex. Yes. Um, I'm not crazy about it because it's kind of big and kind of thick, um, but here's the new one. I, I don't I don't like it. What, do you, do you think, first of all, do you like two-tone watches? No. Period. I'm not a fan of two-tone watches. <laughs> do you uh, think this two-tone... <laughs> this, this, this Oh my lord. It's a little off, uh, right? Yeah, gold push pins, black, yellow, yeah. and then you got a little red in there. Yeah. Uh, it's way too much stuff going on there. I agree with you. I don't like it. Neither do That's I. That's a hot mess. Yeah, I, Sorry. <laughs> I agree. I, I, unlike you, am a huge two-tone fan. Um, it would bring me such joy to like, I've always, I've always wanted to get him this, like one of those two-tone like Cartier Santos Galbis, because it's so 80s. Right. It's so 80s. Right. Um, but I think that this is- I'm not saying, I mean, you could. You could. <laughs> but I think that this is kind of a- <laughs> Yeah. Um, jarring, you know, execution of it. Um, That's a good word. It's it is jarring. It's almost yeah. uncomfortable. It, it is, yeah. Yeah, not a fan. That's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now here's something I think you might actually be interested in, if not from a design point of view, mm -hmm. but from kind of like a, a props to Tudor for a history point of view. Tudor just released this. They call it the P01. It's quite a large watch. It's reminiscent of, of vintage true deep diver watches, mm -hmm. like this. It's actually nearly a reissue of a watch that was made in the 1960s and offered to the United States Navy. Uh, they called it, I believe, the Commando, mm -hmm. and this was it. It's a beautiful watch. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. But there's a, there's a lot. This watch is very different in many yes, ways than is. the watches just released. Yes, I will say yeah. this. Yeah, I like that watch. It's weird. It's weird. It, it, it's especially yeah it, when you get to the to the strap. Yeah, the way that that strap. It, it, if you notice the other the older models had yep. more elongated uh, um, metal. Yep. This one does not. Yep. But there's a certain simplicity to it that that actually to me that works for me. It's kind of it's it's weird and it's yeah it's, I like it. Uh, and, and, and I do like I, the, crown the crown is 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 offset. Yeah, I dig that one. Interesting, right? I like it. Okay, so next is a new Black Bay, mm -hmm. um, but it's not just a Black Bay. I think that this is a response to my criticism, not directly mine, but my you know, criticism that's been echoed by other people as well. Mm -hmm. That Tudor doesn't really have a date just equivalent. Right, Tudor. The, the Tudor dress models of late have been bad. They're 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 not very handsome. They look cheap. Um, they, they they there certainly hasn't been time that's gone into those watches that's comparable to the time that's gone into the rest of the Black Bay line. Okay. Okay. So this is the watch. So compare it to a two tone Rolex Datejust. What do you think? I don't like it. You don't. How don't you? What do you mean you don't like it? I don't, I don't like it. I, For, you forget don't the two tone. Okay, uh, I don't like the. You know what? Tell I don't me. like that. The the white uh, swords, the hands. Oh, I agree with you completely on that. That turns and me off. Everything else is actually kind the of nice. case is nice. The bracelet's yeah, the case, nice. Yeah, I wish the bezel's nice. I wish this were ribbed. You know, a, yeah, it would be a fluted. Fluted, but, yeah. But even yeah. but even the smooth is a little sporty, and I get why they do it. Yeah. But my problem is exactly yours. Why do we have these snowflake hands on this watch? And that's the reason why I told when I said because that's the first thing I, my eye went to. Yeah, it makes it's no just, sense. It, it really, it really. Uh, if that were a, uh, I don't know, a, a black hand or or, or a, a regular or Mercedes, regular hand, Mercedes, yeah, that that would be a fine watch. I just don't understand yeah. why well, you know. What's happening here is, is Tudor is, instead of creating new model lines, right, like Rolex did with Submariner, Datejust, GMT, Oyster Perpetual, etc., 
Tudor's just expanding the Black Bay line. So what is, is Black Bay the brand? I don't understand. What does the Black Bay that we've come to know have anything to do with the Black Bay Chrono? Think of a different name. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, what, what does it have to do with this date just? I don't understand. Why, why isn't Tudor just making these new model lines? Black Bay is the Samara equivalent. There should be a, an equivalent for their chronograph, and there should be an equivalent for their date just. So in my opinion, they did a good job here. The watch is two-tone. The price comes in at 4000 which is significantly below a date just. It's a nice price point. It's a nice price point. The bracelet looks yeah. really handsome, uh, and it's an improvement over their previous dress models. Right. But I do not for the life of me understand why Tudor is just expanding the Black Bay line instead of introducing new lines. Right. Makes no sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a shame. That's a miss on that. Right? Yeah. Like, and it's so close. It's close. It's close. If, 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 if that were turned around, that would be a much better looking watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are Tudor's new 2019 models. Mm -hmm. Overall. What is your opinion? What do you think of the brand? Do they do a good job, or should you know what, what what's going on in your in your in your opinion? In certain examples, it, they did okay, but I think they missed in, in the majority. Yeah, I, I don't know how many. How many did we? Did we uh, four, 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 right? Two, three, four? four, four. Yeah, I think they missed on three or four. Yeah, that's how I. See Which it. is kind of sad. Yeah. It's a and it's a great brand. Yeah, it's a great brand, and and I, you and I wish yeah. them nothing but success. Yeah, yeah. it's Tudor. Yeah, it's a great brand. Yeah. But um, I I respect them for digging back into their history with the PL one. I think that's impressive. That was the winner for me. Yeah, I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, you know, again, weird watch, not for yeah. everyone. Commercial success, probably not. Mm -hmm. But I still commend you for the fact yeah. that it's cool and it's it's your history. It's a good effort. But the rest, yeah. I no. don't know. The, no. the date just bothers me because it's so close. Yeah. It's so close, and yet they still drop the ball. Yeah. So again, if you have not already, go ahead and watch Rolly's episode of Watch People in Wine. You tell the full story of this beautiful watch, don't you? I do. So that's it. Guys, head on over, watch it, enjoy, leave a comment, say hi to Rolly, and uh, thanks for watching. Salute.